We welcome all of you to Central Texas Reed Arena on the campus of Texas A&M as the Kentucky Wildcats come to town to take on the Aggies. To check the current SEC standings, Kentucky has already clinched the top seed in the tournament. They are hoping for their fifth uh, crown under John Calipari. And down at the bottom of this list, Texas A&M, they will finish regular season with a winning record. They have won their last two. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Jim Spinarkle. We're in the first weekend of March, and that means madness is not far away. Put on your prognosticator's okay. hat. Give me some sense of what you think is going to happen this month. Well, one thing I could tell you, Vern, is that it's unsettled right now. When you think about the number one seeds, I think there are still a couple of number one seeds that are up for grabs. And then when you think about the last 20 teams or so that are trying to get into the NCAA tournament, I think there's a bunch of them that need to do a lot of work to get into the NCAA tournament. Kentucky comes in 25-5 and five for the year, and the star among stars is young Malik Monk. And he can really go. If you haven't seen him play, he is just fun to watch. He had 30 in the second half against Florida last weekend, but he can score in so many different ways. He penetrates and dribbles the basketball very well. One of the things he's getting better at, too, is when he gets hit by somebody, he delivers to the basket. One of the best I've seen is a young player off screens. He can come off the baseline, he can come off the high point, and also his three-point shooting. When you look at it, he's 42%. Is he going to be able to carry this team by himself? There's no way. He's going to need more support but he is fun to watch well the Aggies are tired of hearing about this but two months ago they lost to Kentucky in Lexington 100 to 58 well they how do they get back they do have a home court advantage they really do and, and actually over the last two seasons they've played very well here especially as you look at the bottom the top 25 teams they're three and one but I think the key thing will be pace for them this afternoon and also some good inside and outside play by Davis and Gilder when you think about Davis he needs to get his touches you see that he shoots it at 63 percent and watch Gilder on the defensive end also the bottom line leads the SEC with two steals per game maybe they'll get some run outs and get some maybe easy buckets against Kentucky now, Jim, let's take a look at the AT&T fast analysis. Yeah, we're going to highlight two young players for each of these teams. Bam Adebayo is just absolutely terrific. Simple thought. He's gotten better and better at catching the ball with two hands down low, and he really finishes well. So they're going to have to keep him away from the basket with his 81 dunks coming in and his offensive rebounding. Robert Williams, on the other hand, a shot blocker supreme. Second in the SEC. Look at him go after. He's going to help his teammates out in the back line. But don't forget about him on the offensive end of the floor. His numbers as a starter have really picked up getting more and more consistent as a young player john calipari the head coach of kentucky on the floor for the wildcats the starting five fox monk briscoe Adebayu, and Derek willis and for the aggies gilder jc hampton tavario miller one of two seniors morelos and tyler davis and billy kennedy in his sixth season as the head coach at texas a and m doug chow's heads are Officiating crew today, Vladimir Boyard Tadal and Brian Shea are the other two officials. We are underway. And it's in the hands of De'Aaron Fox. And pace is going to be so important for Kentucky to see if they can go up and down the floor in this game. But Texas A&M is going to try to take the air out of the ball just a little bit with them. Well, Adebayo not quite ready for the pass. And there's the first turnover of the game. Vermont, we spoke to John Calipari and talking about that game that you referenced where it was a big blowout. You ask him what the difference was. He said, well, we just made shots. We made a lot of three-point shots, 13 in that game. So it was a little bit of an, you know, an outlier in terms of the way we've been playing this year, even though they've been playing better the last seven games. Well, the Aggies didn't help themselves with 20, 25 turnovers in that game. And there's the first basket. It's Tabario Miller getting a start. He did start in that 100-58 to game. He's one of two seniors. Hampton, number five, is the other. And in the last five games, Miller has been playing well and shooting much better, so it's not a bad start. Great ball rotation. The shot from Willis was off the mark to the right. Rebound, Texas A&M. Always interesting when you have senior day or senior night to see if it gives you a little extra emotion to play with, just as long as it's a controlled emotion. This is Miller guarded by Willis. 
Kicks it back outside. Trosha Morelos. Oh boy, got the bounce. He had a career high of 18 points last time out. Fox hurries the pace. And one of the things about these two teams, they're number one and two in rebounding when they go after them, the offensive end in the SEC. But Texas A&M is long with their up front lineup. And that pass just a little short by Fox. That uh, shot, rather. And one of the things that Kentucky has had some problems with early on in games, too. Burn last week, they went down 8 nothing to Florida to start things off. A little force there. Kick that one out when you double team. Well, the last two games, Jim, they have been down. Yes. By 12 and by 19 in the first half. Here's Briscoe. Works hard, misses. Yeah, that down 19 and that comeback was the largest deficit that they had to come back with under John Calipari. Well, they fought back and then they went back down by 12 in the second half. And uh, did win. Jumper. Monk. Oh, he is something. Yep, but he's short. So in that last game and the previous one, too, he's had 50 points. 20 in the last game out against Vandy in the second half. Yeah, he's been a slow starter, as has his team. And that shot by Miller is too strong. Here comes Willis, backcourt foul. So they're going to get Miller from behind. Yep, Tavario Miller. On uh, the game you did with Brad Nessler. Yep. They won it by 10, and then against Vanderbilt, 19 down first half. Yeah, it goes back to what Cal has been saying, Coach Cal has been saying about his team. They're still in a process of trying to figure out because they have so many young players and kind of looks at him and says, this is what I have to deal with every year. Well, it's not a bad problem either, having all this young talent to try to work with, but I get his point. Briscoe misses. Wildcats are now 0 for 5, and there's a little reach-in foul on Fox. Brackets are back. Get the CBS Sports app to play with friends and compete for prizes. Download it today to be ready when the field is set. 4 0. AM. Billy Kennedy said uh, to us yesterday if we can get to 70, we have a chance to win it. Yeah, and that's with some pace, too, to the game. He yes. doesn't want to go up and down. He's got to make some shots, though. This team shoots the ball pretty well for their record in the SEC when you think about it. Devario Miller. Oh, oh what a block by Willis. Yeah, Willis' ability to move his feet. Agile big guy, but also staying away from people to get that block and separation. So now watch him right here. He's going to go... And watch his separation when he goes up in the air, Vern. So right now, you see that separation? He moves his body away from the shooter and uses his length and long arms and leaping ability to time his shot block. Very well defended on the move by a guy who was six foot nine. Devario Miller is uh, on the bench now. And Robert Williams, the freshman from Oil City, Louisiana, number 44. He is a load. Baseline drive. Oh, boy, Fox is quick. He yeah. really is. And it's going to be called on Hampton. I think Doug Shows, the official, realized just how quick he was, too. That was, you know, he was moving towards him to get a better angle for his call, and he kept stumbling right at him. Fox from the Houston area. out there too right now. Yeah, Dominique Hawkins for John Calipari. Willis skip pass. Hawkins. Ten on the shot clock. Wow! wow. <laughs> that is the 30th consecutive game in which Robert Williams has blocked the shot. And amazing if we talk about a little fan participation. Get ready folks. And watch it. Hold on to your beverages over there because there's some incoming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aggies up by four early going. Let's start with lows for this meaningful moment. Tuesday's game against Vandy. Senior Derek Willis came out on the floor 
His family and girlfriend Keely Potts were there to welcome him. And uh, Derek Willis dropped to one knee. I thought she was going to say no. Ooh, that melt. We've had some good, <laughs> meaningful moments, but this guy has to be in the top two or three. That was just great. Great. Rough arena filled to the rafters and then went crazy. Derek Willis. That's a confident guy, though, when you think about it. Stepping up in front of 24,000 people. Taking a chance on rejection. <laughs> <laughs> well, Keeley claims she had no clue. There's an air ball. And Kentucky, well, this trend is not uh, helpful to their aspirations. Mm -hmm. You look at the numbers 0 for 7 for John Calipari's team. A guy, Fox, they'll let him shoot the ball 19% from long range at the three-point strike. And so far, obviously, no real running opportunities for Kentucky. Good pace at the offensive end for Texas A&M. Williams, short, with the rebound up and in. And pretty move just then by Davis to figure it out. You work your feet around the offensive glass, and that's really what that was, was positioning. And a lot of times, the air balls are easier for the offensive guys to get a hold of. Willis, after the pump fake, the spin move, finally for Kentucky. First basket. And it comes with five minutes gone in the game. Interesting move, too, just by Willis. I mean, he'd have Williams jumping at him from behind. Pretty good composure going to the basket, though. Oh! You know, if Williams gets those opportunities and they're leaning him towards the basket, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Not only does he have the length to deliver, but he gets off the floor in a hurry. Wow. wow. Bad shot. Yeah, you know what? Interesting. Vern Fox has had an ankle problem when he came down just then, and Briscoe's getting off the bench. He hobbled just a touch right at the free throw line. Well, he missed a game with a knee problem. And the that knee, was yeah. Game. From the corner. That's for three by number three, Edmond Gilder. And the Aggies are up by nine. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Just watch Fox as he moves around. So here you go, watch the, the baseline maneuvering. He's just watching the basketball. A lot of big guys forget to watch the basketball. It's simple. And this is just a terrific, now difficult pass in terms of putting it out there towards the baseline. And Gilda just sitting back and letting it rip from the long range where he's pretty good in terms of getting his shot off at just about 40%. Spread it out. You get a two-on-one. Gilda rejected. And then he misfired. Yeah, he outran it. He had Hampton coming with him. If he delayed just a half a second, they could have had a two-on-one and easier opportunity. Nice defensive switch. And uh, Monk misses after Trosha Moreno's came out to defend. They better double-team him. They're waiting for the bounce. There it is. Yeah. Go with it right now. And you. Oh, nice pass. Beautiful. Wow, and a foul. Boy, that was just smart play by Williams. The patience of being able to recognize the first double team coming at him and then being composed to make something happen after he catches the basketball for the second time. When you watch him now, he catches this at the second time and he looks to go baseline, but then he realizes that there's a double team closing in from the weak side. The first came from the power side, the second on the weak side. Terrific recognition to get it to Davis. Well, the Aggies, and there's a check, Brian Shea, the official. No. If Kentucky is practicing coming back from big deficits, yeah. they got some more practice on their hands right now. Third game in a row, they've been down by double digits in the first half. They overcame a 19-point deficit most recently. Double team down low. Scramble. Kentucky turnover. And Texas poised at the offensive end. Oh, what a screen set by Jay. It sure was. Holy cow. Wow. Oh, yes. Better talk. You better talk. To, yeah, here it comes. But he's going to say Kentucky has to talk things over. They're being manhandled by Texas A&M in the paint right now. Indeed.
A terrific start by Texas A&M. And take a look at this screen that's going to be set here to start things off. And watch as this play develops. Okay, it's just one screen out front. But now you have a little bit of a scramble going on to help out the guy coming off the ball screen. And it just throws the rhythm off defensively enough for, for the Aggies to really attack. John Calipari has gone to his bench. Hawkins is in there. And another miss. Wenyon Gabriel with an offensive foul. Number 32. And Michael Mulder, number 11, also on the floor for the Wildcats. Now, this is what Kentucky will do, Vern. They did this the last two games when they were down. Start to pick up a little bit more full court to try to up-tempo this. And Texas A&M will try to combat that by just getting it up the floor and being careful with the ball and making sure they have good decisions. Into the corner, Trosha Morelos. Whoa, oh, where's that pass? pass? Wow. Wow, Dominic Hawkins got it. And that, that was nothing tricky on the defensive end. That was like Hawkins just saying, okay, I'll take that if you're going to throw it on my numbers. <laughs> <laughs> they look inside. They're fronting nice. Tavario Miller, who's back on the floor for AM. From the corner, Gilder. See, after a bad turnover, you always want to come down and get back into your sets. Make sure a lot, enough guys touch the basketball so you really have that turnover disappear in a hurry. And they do with another long shot by Gilder. They kick it back outside. Michael Mulder, nope. Boy, Kentucky is ice cold. A pretty good defensive effort now by AM as well. Adebayo's back. Yeah, Vern, watch what they're doing, too. Watch the middle of the paint from the weak side. And look at, see, now all of a sudden you have two players standing here, and they're taking care of the defensive blocks. And that's exactly what happens, is you get help immediately when the ball is caught down on the blocks. Trosha Morelos back outside. Gilder, he's hit three. Can't get this one. Here come the Wildcats, trailing 15 points. Hawkins, yes. That's for three. Well, just like the first game, as we touched on earlier, Vern, they hit 13 of those shots. And they're forced now to make sure they're hitting their outside shots, and they're going to have to work to get back into this game. Plenty of time to go, though, especially when you have a guy named Monk. Yes. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially in the second half. Gilder again, guarded by Risco. Nice tip. Oh, was it ever. Oh, dear. Oh. Ouch. Oh, boy. And slow to get up. A terrific effort, though. Who's that, Hampton? J.C. Hampton. Time call. The NCAA tournament field is revealed live here on CBS during the selection show. Action begins with the first four leading up to the national championship game Monday, April 3rd. That game televised on CBS. Aggies made it to the Sweet 16 last year. We saw them out in Anaheim losing to Oklahoma, but they had a, a really fine season. Lost four starters from that team and just playing exceptionally well here in the first 10 minutes of this. One. The other thing too about DJ Hogue, the guy who was a 6'9", was a scorer for them, too. Up front player who could step away. Another adjustment Texas A&M had to make during the course of the season here. Oh, that was a reach by Gilder. Yep, they got him from behind. Yep. So the foul is on Gilder, number three. Kobe Eubanks is on, wearing number zero, and Fox with a zero at the line gets the first. Fox shoots one more. And as you touched on before, too, Byrne, with his injury with his knee has slowed him down a little bit. And for those who have not seen him play, he is like lightning with the basketball. And now they're picking up full court to try to force Texas A&M to kind of pick up their pace offensively. See if they can get a steal or a deflection. Monk getting ready to come back in for Kentucky. This is Tavario Miller. 
Gilder. They play the outside game, but their really intent is to look for the post-up action if they can. A little high-low. Here Empty we go. Pass. Yes. Oh, pretty. Oh, yeah. Fouled. Tavario Miller will go to the line. Yeah, they kind of lull you to sleep every so often, Texas A&M, when you think about it, right? They, they throw a little fake weave, and then you seal a guy down low, and you go over the top. And that's a beautiful delivery by Davis to not only go by his man, out of bio with the basketball, but to deliver that over the top. And I love the way that Miller stayed with the play and didn't go up immediately, showed a little ball, and two guys went flying by him to pick up the foul and get to the line. Well, this is not his strength. 51% from the line for the year. Here's Monk back on the floor. Mulder sits. 19-9. Yeah, the one thing you don't want to do if you're Texas A&M too, or when you think about it, you don't want to bask in your glory too early, right? Amen. You know, you got 30 minutes of play left. And I know it went well. The fans were early on. They got this big lead, but they have to really continue to focus on the mission. Oh, dear. Upstairs to the big fella. Yeah, kind of. Hawkins with the delivery off the bounce. They have to get and figure out a way to get out of bio the ball a little bit more. Not only in dunking situations, but three feet away from the bucket. Gilder. Entry pass. Davis guarded by Adebayo. Back outside. Wants to return pass and gets it. Goes baseline. Up and under. No. All right, there's a sense of unease mm -hmm. among the fans now from Aggieland. So if you're pretty strong with the basketball and make a move going towards the middle, coming off the side here, there's going to be an opening for you. And if you do it with some kind of urgency, you're going to force the big guys, in this case Davis, to come after you almost as if you're shooting the basketball. So his mind is saying, I got to get a deflection on the block shot. And from the driver's standpoint, all he's thinking about is getting it over you. So he doesn't have to worry about making the shot because he knows out of bio will bail him out even if he's off by six inches or a foot with the way he gets up. And there's the uh, inbound pass from Fox into the hands of Dominic Hawkins. Yeah, 2-3. Look, to keep an eye down here. If they go to the baseline again or to the wings, they're going to continue to collapse even in their 2-3 defense. Hawkins, strong, oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Well, they figured something out. And what they figured out is that they can penetrate against the guards out front, whether it's in the man-to-man -man or against the zone. And it's forcing Davis to release. And you probably will see some action for Gabriel, too, if they go double-teaming out of bio. That's nine unanswered for Kentucky and the air ball. Take another look at that last possession, Jim. And so same thing, but this time from the left side. Look at the collapse. I mean, that's one of the things that Texas A&M worked on in their practice yesterday. But you can't stop that if you go over the top, especially if you don't get a body, a second guy in from the weak side who has to come down very quickly out of that zone, find the big guy and bump him out of there, even if you pick up a foul. Nice. Wednesday on CBS, 20 of the most legendary game changers in Survivor history. Return for a season like no other. Don't miss the premiere this Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, only on CBS. Tyler Davis, the sophomore out of Plano West High School. Always sounds like plain old West. There you go. Right? <laughs> Thriving suburb of Dallas. This young man continues to work hard getting his body in shape. I think it was like he lost 70 pounds late in high school to get himself into better condition. Whoa! And Williams continues to be a force. Good job by Willis, though, to push him out. Gilder. Here comes Kentucky. Monk. Back outside. Hawkins for three. 
Well, it's a nice kick out by Monk, though. He didn't force the action. He's more patient. That's what John Calipari wants from him. Good pitch. Yes, it was. Well, they are really looking to take advantage of their size. You know, Kentucky blocks five shots a game, and they'll get their shots, but I don't think Texas A&M is shying away from them at all. They want to really challenge the bigs down low. That would no good from the corner. Great position by, Ty, uh, by Tyler Davis just then. Hampton. Uh, notice how he just pulled it out. Two guys back on defense that trip. No forcing of the action. Play with the lead, but play with confidence. Now the shot clock's working against him. Five on the shot clock. Jumper. Trocha Morelos in and out. See, what those good sets allow them to do to Vern is if they're playing smart half-court basketball, it actually sets up your defense so you have good balance on the floor because you know where the shots are basically going to come from. Hawkins. Jumper Fox. Yes. Maybe not from three, but he can hit that little 12-footer there. Watch for him to try to get one. Uh-oh. That's going to be a trip, I believe. I think you're right. Another look at Tyler Davis. Yeah, he does the work. Do your work before you catch the basketball, and then when you catch it, it should be relatively easy. Nice lead again by the Aggies. Game summary thus far, points in the paint, advantage A&M, not unexpected. They've got an advantage with the bigs. Yeah, they really do. They use their big line in the front line, and they post up one another very, very well, and they look for one another, but it usually comes from the outside, the guards with a little bit of a disguise with the dribbles, and then all of a sudden they attack down deep in terms of going after it. So here's one off the dribble straight up to start the game by Miller, and then all of a sudden Davis works a little bit, and then both him and Williams start to work well together. So they continue to just push the basketball as much as they can in a strategic fashion, not just wild, but strategically going after the blocks. At the line, J.C. Hampton. He's a graduate, graduated senior. Played uh, at Lipscomb College before coming here to Aggieland. Playing better, too, over the last seven games or so for this team. You know, Vern and just, you know, and looking to score a little bit more and more consistently. Four straight games where he's had nine-plus points. And here comes Monk off the screens. Now you saw Isaac Humphreys, the seven-footer from Australia, grab that rebound. Here's Monk, guarded by Gilder. Trying to get it back to Monk, and they do. They're closing double teams on Monk when he puts it on the floor. Three on the shot clock. Humphreys. I don't know that he was the guy you wanted to take that shot, but... But but you have it with less than three. You have to yeah. do something with it. And then all of a sudden, a game that was kind of under control by Texas A&M, now all of a sudden, Kentucky's building a little bit of confidence and momentum to work their way back to the... You know, they just really want to be in this at the half. And they're working their way into a reasonable deficit or maybe take the lead if they continue to play like this. Turnaround jumper. Not so sure about the wisdom of that. Mm -hmm. Middle of the floor. He can do a lot of damage. Here comes Briscoe. Nice. Monk. How about that rebound? Woo! Williams knows how to move his feet prior to it, and everything else just flows right through his body with his rebounding. Hampton, guarded by Monk, so five on five. Wow, he's got to dump one down to Williams, I think, on the baseline. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Tony Trocia Morales. Out of Cartagena, Colombia. You know, it's always interesting to me, Vern. The guy who gets the block doesn't do all of the work. You see just a little bit of work by Hampton to slow the driver down right in the middle. And that forces the offensive guy to just hesitate and reload just a touch. And it allows a big guy to come in and get the, the really impressive block and get all the recognition, too. Hmm. And I'm not giving it all to him. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a subtle little nuance point, but well taken. Hawkins goes back and grabs it. 
Under five to go. Aggies jumped out to a 16 to 2 lead as Kentucky missed 10 of its first 11 from the field. But we are with a six point margin here. Back to their 2 3 zone. Mulder. Oh, what, oh my out. gosh. Oh boy. Watch oh, the dear. Oh. All right, he's bouncing up. He just got that hand down to break that ball. So when you go up and somebody gets your legs, that's when it has to be, you have to be careful coming down. And sometimes, let's see, I think he gets his arm down just ahead of the elbow. Oh, boy. Because it wasn't the point of the elbow going down. So fortunate for him, for him and he bounces back up that quickly. Well, there's a lot of speculation about will Robert Williams be one and done at Texas A&M. Yesterday indicated I have not made up my mind. But he's really had a terrific first year here. And hasn't really been featured all the time at the offensive end. Nope. 61% from the line. Yeah. So it remains six. There's the out. Oh, boy. <laughs> you can't look down for a second. No. <laughs> it's only Monk with his vertical leap that he has. Here we go again down low. That's what they have to do. They have to get him the ball more efficiently. Davis. Now they're a little too tight. Have yes, to they to, are. Yeah, try to back it out just a touch. Wow. Oh, boy. Take a look at Monk's play. You know, when you think about it coming off the screen right now, okay, you talk about the screen, and you're thinking he's going to the corner maybe for a flare, and then he goes upstairs on you. And a vertical leap burn, 42 inches. Him and myself had a combined 44, <laughs> which is a vertical leap. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty. Off the glass. Briscoe. It's a two-point game. And all of a sudden, this crowd has become very quiet, relatively speaking, to how they were in the first five minutes. Oh. Hampton asked for the timeout and was given it. So Kentucky answering very nicely. Briscoe coming towards his left hand and making it off the glass. Then we're going to go upstairs towards the glass for Monk. Aggies lead, but only by two. 3.27 to go in the first half. Well, Mr. Spanarkle, who's in, who's out of the tournament, that is? Well, Vern, I think you have to obviously look at Florida, Kentucky, and South Carolina as three teams from this conference that are in. Arkansas, I think with 22 wins, should get in. They have a little bit of work to do still. I mean, they have Georgia today at 2 o'clock. But I think overall, they've put up some good work. And I think when you think about it, also Alabama, if they make a little bit of a run, they've been in the talk in terms of possibly making a run next week in Nashville if they put together a couple of good games. Trosha Morales, so oh, it's stolen by Derek Willis. Let's check the five and the four. Here's Briscoe, Monk. Monk with only two points so far. Willis for three, yeah. And guess who is on top? They've practiced coming back from deficits like we touched them on it about the six minutes into this game. And now it's really important for Texas A&M to see how they're going to rebound against this team with Kentucky playing with confidence. Different team. Nice. And one. You have to be able to score if you're a big guy. It's easy when you're all alone, but it's tougher when you get bumped a little bit. And are you able to take advantage of that? And at 6'10", you, ha you have some power right there. And he goes right through the blast by Adebayo just then and finishes his play. So get hit and make something happen with it because you know there's going to be contact when you're playing with the big front lines of these two teams. Two of three from the line so far today. Here's Briscoe stepping in. Uh-huh. So a lane violation. Take another one. Billy Kennedy, graduate of Southeast Louisiana, sixth year here. 
overcame some health issues. Mm -hmm. Great to see that his health is he's doing well with that. And to take advantage of the miscue by yeah. Kentucky to pick up a point. Davis has 11 points. Averaging 14 for the year. Good bounce pass. That's a nice delivery by Monk. Sometimes you can throw a bounce pass and it's going horizontally across the court and it's a slow bounce pass, but watch how quickly this ball gets right here. How quickly it gets to Hawkins so he can catch it and do something. A lot of times guys just put the ball out there and lay it there and it gets it takes an extra second or so to get to your receiver. Good catch, good pitch, and then off they go to the basket and they get three out of it. Hawkins, one of the seniors for the Wildcats. There are three seniors on this team. The usual allotment of outstanding first-year players, but uh, give a lot of credit to these three who have stayed the course at Kentucky. And from a contribution standpoint, Vern, I think if they're going to make a run, you know, they, they have a score in Monk, but they're going to need those seniors to step in. 27-26 coming up on AT&T at the half. Greg Gumbel, Seth Davis, and Wally Serbiak will have highlights from today's early action, including Villanova, Georgetown, and a preview of Notre Dame at Louisville, where the Irish look for their fourth straight win over the Cardinals. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. That's kind of a flat-lined free throw, isn't sure it? Sure was. Sure was. 75% shooter. And you get a regroup. And get back to your normal flow of shooting the basketball. Better. Yep, much better. Briscoe Willis Mulder. Along with Adebayo and Monk. Here's Monk. And Gilder has the job of just tracking it. He's a pretty good defensive player, too, especially off the bounce. Boy, he stayed with him then. Here's Mulder. No. Willis, the offensive board. Monk. Good pick. Oh, yes, yeah. it was. Mulder. There you go. Nice work by Monk. Don't force the shot. One of the things John Calipari, you know, here's a guy put up, what, 47 against Carolina. Early, yeah. So you know he can score, but he wants him to be more patient with his offense. Turnover. That is only the third Aggie turnover in the first half. And when you look at it, Vern, obviously the offensive rebounds really trigger the easier shots because you're just scrambling from a defensive standpoint trying to catch up with the shooters. Kentucky by three. Here comes the screen work. They'll bring it over to him. By Monk. Mulder. Davis. So we get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity here. Yep. Adebayo. 64% free throw shooter for the year. Davis with the rebound. 115 to go before the break. Kentucky down by 14 after a blistering start by the Aggies. You know, when you think about it, Vern, that first game that we touched on, they had 100 points Kentucky did against Texas A&M. You think it, look at it right now, it's only doubling up to about 60, 65 points, giving them a couple down the stretch even. Whoa, just hit the rim. Yeah, that's a good call. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's going to be a good call just then. A lot of hustle from yeah. Edmond Gilder. The shot goes way up high. Watch Davis with a little step back like a guard. And it just grazes off the rim and comes straight down. And it gives Gilder an opportunity to beat Mulder to the ball. And he actually bumps him off of it. So very good call. Shooting two. Remember, he just went one for two. Yeah. And hit his second of the two shots. So coming back to the line with just a touch of confidence. Cody Eubanks, number zero, and Tavario Miller, number 42, on the floor for AM. Nice tip again. 
Yeah. And Williams gets off the floor in a hurry, doesn't he? Yes. And he understands what to do if he can't get to the basketball with that tip out. Willis is fronting him right now. And they may go over the top on him if he steps up again. Out of bio right yeah. behind him. I, I, I noticed the same thing. Just in case. Uh, not a good shot. And you get the last one if you want it. Short. Watch out. They may take the last one right now. Yeah, though. they will. Frisco. Yes! What a beauty. Use that high screen. Watch for the big guy stepping across. And then float a sweet one up against the glass. Watch him come across. He knows he's going to be have a shot at it by Millet or block it. And he has to go upstairs just a little bit higher to release the basketball quickly. He gets it on the underhand, which gets it off his hand that much faster. Well, Kentucky was in comfortable territory. They were down by 14. <laughs> They're now up by four at the half. End of the half, our score 32-28. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. AT&T. And by Lowe's. Start with Lowe's. Welcome you back to Reed Arena on the campus of Texas A&M. Aggies led for 16 minutes and 22 seconds, but they're not in front right now. 32-28. Take a look at the scoring run here. Yeah, and that's one of the things that Kentucky does so well. And, you know, John Calipari does not want to get into the habit, Vern, of being down so many points. In fact, he said that, you know, if you do that in the NCAA tournament, you have the wrong team you're competing against. You may be going home earlier than you planned, but... They bounce back here against Texas A&M. It'll be real interesting to me to see exactly how Texas A&M comes out in the second half. First four or five minutes to see if they've reestablished that start they had at the beginning of this game, which was very impressive. Let's take a look, Jim, at the halftime uh, stats presented by Bud Light. Well, I think, you know, when you look at it, fairly comparable except for the bench, and that's not surprising. A&M uh, doesn't go really that deep, but the rebounding pretty even. And when you think about the score, Vern, how about this one? 32-28, to 28, the first time these two teams played, it was 50-27 to 27 in favor of Kentucky. A little different here. Yes. Well, the pace dictated in large measure by the Aggies. They get the ball here to open the second half. J.C. Hampton... Entry pass, Trosha Morales, and there was Willis. Monk. And the question becomes, Vern, whether this hit Monk. He threw it from out of bounds into the player's leg, and it kicked back out of bounds. Now, if that ball hit Monk while he was on the, out of bounds on a fly, and I think it misses him because they get the basketball. But if that ball by rule hit him before it bounced out of bounds and he's out of bounds, it clearly it would have been Texas A&M ball. Well, brief discussion with uh, two of the officials. There's a little bit of a wall down low for the bigs that they're going to post. Oh, look at look at Williams. Right in the face of Derek Willis. There's Fox from the corner. Yes. Yeah, I think they're going to have to play. That's one of the strategies Texas A&M is trying to look at just then. Give Fox the outside shot. Collapse the floor. Squeeze the middle of the paint and give Fox. He's only a 19% shooter. Give him that shot. Oof. A little heavy. Yeah, it was. Foul on the drive. And Briscoe. We'll go to the line. And so Kentucky, the way they came back and rebounded, they went upstairs. 
They were just really looking for out of bio. Bam going up and really knocking it down. And they go to the little guy, Monk, across the baseline. Who did a much better job in the second part of that first half attacking the paint and driving it to the middle of the floor. Frisco, nothing. You know, a moment ago, Vern, we saw Williams shoot that long-range shot. And he's 0 for 14 from 3. 0 for 15 now. Yeah. yeah. I think logic would tell you to get underneath the basket. I, I, I didn't see Billy Kennedy, but I'm sure the reaction <laughs> was similar, I would think. Yes. Thirty-five twenty-eight, largest Kentucky lead of the ball game. Davis. Gilbert. A little trouble there. Getting out the alley. Back outside. Let's reload. Gilbert puts it up left handed and off the glass. Yeah, no choice. I think, you know, he bobbled it a touch and had to go with his left. I don't think he had a choice. Here's Fox. Oh, brother. Lighting up from outside. And so what that does for Fox, it starts to bait the defenders to come his way. Calipari coming with a little bit of a full court action here for Traps. Trying to really pick up the pace. And you notice how Williams turns down that jump shot. Yes, he did. <laughs> oh, blocked by Willis. Ball on the floor. Timeout, maybe? Yeah, timeout. Thirty-eight, thirty. As De'Aaron Fox lights it up from outside, here's uh, Gilder. Look at this. Well, he's got the H covered. Nice touch there. <laughs> The Aaron Fox two threes that has extended the Kentucky lead to eight with 17.58 to go. Well, let's uh, talk about the team on the left, Northwestern. In or uh, bubble? I got to give them an in right now. I, I think it's too. a fabulous story. Chris Collins has done a terrific job there. You look at Mark Hughes' team. I think that loss is going to help them take that, you know, undefeated run off their backs. You know, UCLA has put up some good numbers again. They get, like to go high octane up and down the floor. Still a very interesting week of basketball ahead of us. Hampton, no. Willis. Well, how about uh, Michigan State, 19 in a row in the tournament. Yeah, and even though a loss this week, that guy named Tom Izzo knows what he's doing. Gets his team ready as the season winds down. Even when they've had some struggles in the middle, the Bruins, as I mentioned, scoring a lot of points. And Dayton, and they're going to surprise some people. They're pretty good. Yes, they are. Matthew Miller doing a great job coaching that team. Gilder, look at the defensive collapse. Wow. And a foul call. Kentucky foul number 35, Derek Willis, his second personal team in the second half. Kentucky's trying to squeeze the floor, but that I mean just getting blue shirts in there. And, and now all of a sudden you go underneath, because that's the only way you're going to get it to Williams on that play, and he gets fouled. So Gilder with good smarts once he gets smothered by that defense. 44, Robert Williams, alive the Aggies, 32. Robert Williams. DeAndre Jordan in 07 08. Look at Williams, he's got a higher stat in almost yeah, every category. Yeah, right across the board. Yeah. I'm going to say you have to hit those free throws because you don't want to be compared to Jordan, not to knock him with his free throw shooting. Briscoe, Gabriel's on the floor now. A little more open perimeter game. Boy, he's got it. And if you notice, Vern, they took everybody out of the middle of the floor just then, Kentucky, a different set. That one's more geared towards perimeter play, being able to put the ball on the floor and giving it to somebody who can beat his man one-on-one, -on -one, as Fox just did. Fox has 12, and Kentucky leads by nine. There's the double, nice pass out. Offensive foul. 
Davis, you take a look at the middle of the floor. You know, normally we've been seeing a lot of congestion in there, and then all of a sudden he just burns by his defender, gets by Hampton very quickly, and uses goes back to his inside hand to get the shot off. And you just have to find a way to keep him out of the lane. And that's usually a byproduct. He, as you mentioned, Vernie, hit those two outsiders. So as a defender, you're starting to lean out against them a little bit to protect against the outside shot, and he sees that and goes right by. Now here's someone who has been very quiet offensively in this game. Wow. Monk. <laughs> wow, is it was, right. It was wild at the end, but it was pretty for that behind the back. Watch behind. Hampton, number five. Texas A&M Texas could use a score right about now just to get some confidence back. Kentucky picking up the defense is one of the things that Kentucky coach John Calipari has been urging his team to get more focused. Not there. CBS Sports Network's biggest bracket week ever is underway. Three conference championships in six days. And late round games from tournaments all over the country. Don't miss any of the action all week long on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. From the corner, missed again. He's good in the open floor, Monkey. And he got back pretty quickly, though, Texas A&M. Did. Yeah, get back, get back, get back. Kept stressing that in practice yesterday. Monk, turnover. And pick it up, give it to the guard. That's Hampton, two. yes. Dunk. Oh my god, I didn't think he'd be able to get the catch. I didn't either. And then even get to the rim. He had a guy in front of him. A little upside in a lot of ways for Williams. Oh. Adebayo, yes. That is quiet the crowd. There is a, a large group of big blue here. They travel for basketball as well as anybody in the country. They really do. And they find pretty good seats. Yeah, too. they I just how they do it. <laughs> it's all blue behind the Kentucky bench. Nope. He's tipped again. Both of these teams, one and two. Offensive rebound in the SEC. They have to just block out one another. Good curl. Oh, let's do it again. Oh, repeat. Let's do it from the other side. <laughs> No, we didn't rerun that one, but they did. How does that energize the crowd? Listen to them. And time for Kentucky to answer, to shake that off as a team. Fox, Gabriel, tripped. Let's take another look, as they say in television. Well, if you think you're going upstairs on the first one, you are right now. Here's the flight number one, and we're taking off for number two. A little bit more impressive. Forty-two, thirty-five. DeAndre Fox has uh, led the way. And take a look at the AT&T. Fast analysis. Don't you take my lines away Sorry, from me. Sorry, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this guy taking a little bit of the lines away from Monk, isn't he? Fox, though, and when he has to kick it up with a couple outside shots and then adds a three and watch him come right to the camera here just about finishing it off. He's like, you know, he just blurs by people from the outside if you start leaning towards him. 12 points thus far, four of eight from the field. And among those here, well, that's timely. Johnny Manziel on the left. Mike Evans caught a few passes. I saw him complete a 95-yarder against Alabama a couple of years back, three years ago. They must know people. They got good, good seats. seats My guess is you've, you've seen some decent SEC football plays over your course of your great career. Many of them <laughs> applied by this guy on the left. 
and the guy on the right. And by the way, always fun to listen to you and Gary Danielson do the games over the years. We've received word from Bonita Springs, Florida. Oh, okay. That Mr. Danielson is not playing golf today. That's the first upset. Okay. And he's watching a regular season basketball game. That's good, number two. Good to hear. <laughs> good to hear from him. Yep. There's Mike Evans, Ray Fletcher. Chris Collins in the game for Texas A&M right now. Actually, he started in that uh, game two months ago. Hasn't played in the last, uh, did not play in the last game, number 12. And Hampton with the four foul. Yeah. Hampton's on the bench with four. Derek Willis. Now shooting right over the 2-3 zone. And I like the way that Kentucky is coming up. A new guard on the floor. Put some pressure on him. Make him make a play in the first minute or so. He picked up a foul and he's in trouble right now. Trojan Morelos. He's fouled as he goes up. He'll go to the line. And so you have to spread and watch. You start to just cheat out. It's, it's just playing the defense right now. You see, he doesn't stand in there because then the defender, Williams, will turn right around and, de and defend him easily. But Will is smart enough to just drift. You watch a guy with the basketball, and you become an easier target by moving your feet and getting yourself set and ready to catch and shoot. One more coming. And Malik Monk's going to come back on. Carlton, I think, yes, Chuck Carlton. Chase Carlton. Number 33 is on for Texas A&M. There he is. Played last year at Ranger Junior College under former Aggie and Kentucky coach Billy Gillespie. He's only played 75 minutes this season, so he'll get a chance. And I'm sure that's to see how he's going to handle the basketball. If Kentucky scores or gets to the line and scores, they'll come up with that press again just to see if they can handle it a little better. Here's a footnote. Briscoe back to Fox. And that's why they left him alone. Yeah. They're going to play the percentages. And Fox at 19% on the three-point shot. They ran away from him that trip. Here's Chase Carlton. Coach Morales. Mulder. Gilder, rather. Yep, good call on Willis. Yeah. And if you go to the basket with some strength and aggressiveness, unless the defender is just sitting there in better position, watch how he comes strongly to the basket. Willis never gets in front of him. He's moving as a big guy. You're going to get that call 99% of the time because it's the right call. Gilder. Nine-point game. Eight-point game. And Texas A&M hasn't been able to get the ball inside as easily for Billy Kennedy as they did in the first ten minutes of this game. And during that first ten minutes, they jumped out to a 16-2 to two lead. And they got to find Monk, though. He's one for six in the game, has only two points. His season low is 10. And that was executed pretty well. Here we go upstairs again. Oh, Willis again. Yep. Defensively, though, the other end of the floor, Texas A&M finding Monk. Trying to rotate on him, and here we go upstairs. Williams trying to crank another one down, but Willis gives him the body bump. John Calipari using this as a coaching moment, instructing Malik Monk. What he said about Monk, and he did at that time, is that if Monk just goes straight up with his shot, it's pure. He has a tendency to kick his leg out just a little bit, and when he does, it throws his balance off. Oh, off the market. Badly. Gilbert. Here's Monk. Upstairs. 
Well, he hung on the rim, and I believe he did so for his own safety. And I agree 100% with you. Another guy with the vertical leap who goes upstairs. His just about 39 inches. And yes, he has to hold on. They don't like the call, but there's somebody coming underneath them right there. And when you're up like that, not that I've ever been up there, Vern, <laughs> but I guess I guess you got to think that I don't know where the guy is underneath me. If he's going to take my legs out from underneath me, then I'm really going to have problems. So it's no, a good I, no call. Absolutely agree. Briscoe, let's do it again. Out of bio. Bam with the wham. A little answer. Williams has been, has been doing it for Texas A&M. That's knocked out of bounds. That'll be the Aggies. 49-39. 12-01 to go. Kentucky trying to sweep the series. Uh, getting a bit more resistance this time than they did on January 3rd. Well, be careful with that pass. Uh-oh, watch him get up, Monk. Here we go. <laughs> now he's got four points. And you know what? Like last week against Florida, I made the same comment. Now he's one for one in this game, so watch him. Yep, he can be explosive. Look at this guy. <laughs> That's at least three. <laughs> yes. And like you said a moment ago, you take your eye off him for a second, you, you've missed the action. Jeez, Liz. Here we go again. Bang! You see the graphic? <laughs> 209 and 4 under Calipari when they bled by 10 or more. That's pretty... <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling because I remember, you know, when Tony Dorsett played for the Cowboys eons ago in the yeah. 70s, there was a graphic that came up. They were 39-2 and two when he gained 100 or more. Yeah, yeah, yeah really? Yeah. Too much. That's where you have to be more patient. Two Kentucky players back defensively. Boy, Adebayo is banging. Here's Gilder from the corner. This time he got it. Well, thank you very much. You got it. Welcome to the party. Here we go. There's one and two. Yeah. And that's not over yet. Oh, Williams is terrific. The ones he's been getting. Oh, what a show. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. Verizon. Join a better network because better matters. And by the Lincoln Motor Company. Tis a rainy day in College Station tonight in primetime on CBS. Undefeated welterweight champions Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia meet in a title bout showdown. Showtime Championship Boxing on CBS. Presented by Premier Boxing Champions. 53-44. 10.39 to go. Wenyon Gabriel's back on the floor now. And here's De'Aaron Fox. Mulder. Nice pump fake. So nice. Gabriel. Rebound Davis for the Aggies. Davis just knows how to position his body constantly. He's great at the defensive and offensive rebounding. Uh-oh. Simple one, but it's a good call. Isaiah Briscoe. Sixth team foul. First foul for Briscoe. And John Calipari is going to get Willis back in the game along with Malik Monk. Well, you've watched Monk.
47, as you mentioned, against North Carolina back in December. Uh, he's exploded in the second halves of the last two games. Tonight, to this afternoon, rather, he's two for eight for four points. Whoops. A line drive shot. Good hands if you can grab it. Nope. Good nope. work. Yep. Fox stayed back. Yep. Uh oh. <laughs> Monk is not afraid to challenge. <laughs> We've seen that a couple of times over the last you're, couple of weeks. You're right. Looking to crush one, and it's a good call also. Well, he is from Lepanto, Arkansas, in the northwestern part of the state. One of his brothers, Marcus Monk, was a wide receiver at Arkansas. Remember him well. I think Cal is emphasizing don't allow these guys from the perimeter. We haven't seen it much in the last five minutes driving by people into the middle of the floor. And so it's been bottling up for Kentucky defensively as they pick up again just to keep the pressure on. The catchers have been 10 feet, not five feet away from the basket. Younger, oh, what a rebound. Whoa! Yeah, the young man's got a little talent. He sure does. And I'm thinking there's really no reason he should be able to do that. <laughs> and he can do that. That was an awesome, awesome rebound from behind him. That I thought it got away from him. 9-10 to go. And still looking for the lob over the top of this 2-3 zone. Little floater. Front rim. Carlton now, number 33. Get, get into your offense quickly. That's what you want to do if you're being pressured out front, in particular if you have a fast guy and you release the basketball and get other guys involved. There you go. A little drive. Take a look at the offensive rebound just a moment ago. And look where he catches the basketball. See, now he's drifted a little too far underneath the basket, but he reaches back, and not only does he reach back, but he's able to corral it. You know, he stops it, and then he kind of glides it back into a catchable position. And had a little smaller guy on him, so it gives him an advantage on the weak side. This is Admon Gilder at the free throw line. Isaac Humphreys, the sophomore from Sydney, Australia, back on the floor, replaces Adebayo. Whether they can put a run together, Texas A&M, by looking at them out there, they still have a good vibe collectively. They just seem to be playing energetic, but this is a... A tough Kentucky team to slow down. That's why they're going to the 2-3 zone again. I fix it by Willis. Here's Fox up and under oh, and not quite. He didn't know that was going to be that easy. No, you're right. Carlton. That's a quick hit. A quick catch again. Ooh. We had a pretty good angle on that one. Unless there was a body bump, that looked like a clean strip by Hawkins. Hawkins certainly feels that way. So Briscoe is going to come back in. A lot of times you can watch the defender. Watch number 25 when he comes in on this play. And watch his body language. Oh, he's saying that was a clean strip. And sometimes it's easier, you know, on the replays. Just watch the guy who can call for the foul. And you can almost tell whether he... Most of them think it's not a foul, by the way. <laughs> Remember the old days you had to raise your hand? I don't remember that. <laughs> We're dating ourselves. Yeah, yes, we are. <laughs> That's the fourth foul on the senior, Dominique Hawkins. Nope. They need those free throws. They do. They really do. Back to the 2 3 defensively. Mulder, Briscoe. Notice how much higher he had to go when Williams stepped in yes. front of you. He, had a, he was thinking I can go to the third floor, but then he thought maybe I got to go to the fifth. <laughs> you 
like this action out front because what happens is they try to dump it down low once they get you moving outside on the perimeter. Here we go. Bang! <laughs> to watch, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it's quick. They run you around the perimeter and then they set you up for the flush. And it's nice to have guys who can throw the flush down, too. Monk, they got Willis Let's go. The right. They got Carlson off his feet. That leaves Monk open. He's having a bad day offensively. He sure is. And Mr. Tyler Davis is cleaning up some glass. Margin is only six under seven to play. Look for the trip. Carlton's been giving him some good numbers after he came in and replaced uh, Collins. Here you go. We're going to go around the horn just for a little bit, and you're going to lay out, and we're going to flush it on you. It's still hanging around. I would direct your attention to line three, right hand side. Free throws, 12 of 22. For the Aggies, they're still only down six. Uh, let's take a look at a little basketball talk here. The big. Oh, I like it. Huh? I like it. You're inside ready to roll, basketball. baby. You're ready. And it was some inside. Davis and Williams, a nice combination. First on the pass, then they were going to start going upstairs. And once again, most of the Texas A&M players understand and know Williams very well and what he's capable of doing. And, you know, it's like that shortstop in the hole and baseball just fire it over to a guy at first and hope he scoops it up same kind of mentality here just throw it out there and see if, throw it up in the air and see if he can go get it now here's chase carlton at the line mentioned he played last year at ranger junior college nope another miss a couple of free throws for the season too burn over yeah. two or so I'm sure Coach Calipari got in Monk's head a little bit and said, forget about your stats. We need you as there's a travel by Willis. We need you coming down the final six and a half minutes of this game. So be aggressive. Selective, but aggressive. Now Fox with a little pressure in the backcourt on Carlson. Carlson had extensive minutes in the last game for A&M. And I did mention briefly earlier that he played for Billy Gillespie, who uh, was a coach mm -hmm. here and then at Kentucky. And Billy retired uh, back in November before the season for health reasons. I first met Billy Gillespie. He was an assistant to Bill Self at Bank. Yep. And then all of a sudden, hey, it's only four. It's only four. And as I said about three minutes ago, Vern, this team, even though they were down many more than this, they have a little collective confidence that they're showing. And they're shutting down Kentucky, as we just saw. Boy, Davis is doing some job on Adebayo. Yeah. And and wow. A nice two-three zone. They're helping one another. Yeah, how about that one? Briscoe's an interesting player for this team. You know, you end up talking about the freshman a lot, and obviously you should. But Briscoe is, when he's playing well, is very important to this Kentucky team. Nice up, upstairs there going up and floating one through the lane. And the Fox and Monk in that backcourt get a lot of the attention and well-deserved. Mm -hmm. Five twenty to go. They're always looking for the cut to the basket. Not there for Gilder on this one. Rebound, Briscoe. This Kentucky team flew in yesterday from Lexington and had a full workout in the morning, roughly the same hours as this game time. Normally they would have their workout, then try and you know, climb on a plane and and get in the night before. But uh, whoops. At a bio. He's going to help him out. There you go with Willis coming to him. 
Hawkins. And they got a fresh shot clock, is what John Calipari is saying to them, so use it. Monk. Two for ten. Offensive board, Kentucky. Yeah, now the interesting part to me with this game, Vern, is that on average this year, Kentucky's offense, they usually get a shot up right about within 14 seconds of the shot clock expiring. Now they have to learn a little bit how to play and take their time, and the shot clock keeps winding down on them a little bit. How about that? Yep, get a little bounce from Willis. Yes. Be happy with that. But it's totally a different style than what they're accustomed to playing, which could help them in the next week yeah. in Nashville and also in the NCAA tournament if they get a slow-down type of team that comes at them. This is Carlton. You can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> Not a bio going upstairs. And there's a timeout on the Williams put this drop step here. He thinks he's got himself a layup. But I don't think so right now. Whew, man. The 6'6 freshman Malik Monk has averaged, has scored in double figures every game so far this year. And he has really been struggling today. And you know, Fern, one of the things when you watch him, most of these shots that he's taken are shots that he can make. I mean, he's not really one or two he may have forced in the lane, but for the most part, not bad attempts. You can see he's two for 10 today, averaging north of 20 in wins, just south of 20 in losses. And today he needs four more in the final 339 to keep that double digit figure alive. Uh, a terrific set by Billy Kennedy just then to go for a lob which was open, but the pass just went AWOL on that one. Wow. He can't, he couldn't believe it over on the sidelines that that pass was just so far off the target. And Monk, by the way, had 26 in the first game too. So you the differential between what he's doing today and what he did in that blowout at Kentucky. 158 in that first game two months ago. Aggies have only turned it over eight times in this ball game, which has helped them keep this game close. Here's Briscoe. Look at Williams chase down that ball. And you chase down are two good words you just said, Ververn. He just absolutely did because he was over about six, seven feet away from that rebound. Gilder has 18 points in this game. He's played very well. Here's Williams. Yes. Seven point game, under three to go. If he could continue to blend a 15 footer in with his baseline play, his post up action, and his dunks, some package. I don't think they're going to shy away from Monk. No. But Gilder has done a terrific job on him defensively. And there's a reach in. Gilder with that reach in late. Well, triple header for you today, and coming up next, Notre Dame, Louisville. And then we'll complete the day with Arizona at Arizona State. We're getting hot and heavy with basketball here over the weekend. We've got three more games tomorrow, including Purdue Northwestern. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll see how Mike Bray goes in and plays against the Louisville defense that match up defense a lot of people call it a zone a lot of people call it man to man but it's a combination of and rick patino and master at extending the floor that should be a very interesting ball game out of bio five of six from the field today nope but there's a tip that goes right to briscoe So now the, the balance of slowing down your offense, which they've been doing pretty much all afternoon. It's not been a run and gun type of game for them as far as fast breaks. Only about 10 points for Kentucky on the fast break. So they've been executing at the offensive end. Oof. Wow. And one. Basket counts. A little patient offense. Now watch Fox go to work. He gets the shoulders by initially. Spins through. 
And then that ability of just the knack for understanding how to score on the way to the basket when you're off balance and you have guys jumping at you. Very effective. Big bucket just then, too, for Kentucky. Gives them a little bit of breathing room. And Kentucky has called timeout. Hampton just fouled out. That ends his career at AM. J.C. Hampton just fouled out. A young man who played at Lipscomb. He's a native of Gainesville, Georgia. Here is a graduate student. Only one point today. I mentioned the final game. They might get to the NIT. Yes, they could. Absolutely. Final game at uh, regular season at Reed home. Arena. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Just to be precise. <laughs> Carlton's back on the floor. Just not getting the mileage they had in the first half underneath the basket as much. Catch and release. Nice. And that was a set play, too, for him to come off the screen along the baseline. And when you know a play is called for you, you should be more confident in your catching and thinking. Wow. Out of Bayou from Monk. Monk had to avoid the charge, too, on that play. And look at the collapse. Three guys around him on the ba baseline. Far rim. So Williams is going back to the free throw line. <laughs> Here comes Monk. He's going to try to bring the big at him, which he does, and he throws what actually is an off pass here. It's not a very good pass, but because Adebayo is so good and watches the ball and has terrific hands, able to catch it and finish it. Well, the first of our triple header on CBS this afternoon and coming up next, Notre Dame against Louisville. Tip time for that one, 2-12 Eastern time. Notre Dame goes for four in a row. One more for Robert Williams. They have been... I'm trying to search for the proper word. Dreadful is too strong. But they ain't been good at the free throw line. Could use some improvement, maybe. Fox. Oh, my goodness. Jumper, Morelos. Back outside, nice play. Jumper, Gilder, no. Watch how quick Fox is. And you think you have him, and you're right in front of him. When you think about it, Carlton wasn't in bad position, but he was moving back just a little bit. And that's where Fox can really, really burn you in terms of coming at you. He sees that you're off balance a little bit. You don't take a stand on him defensively, and it's just too late. Fox has 17, 13 in this half. And Wenyo Gabriel is at the line. And I think this is a good example of, you know, especially for the Kentucky fans who want to make a run. If you think Monk is going to be the only guy to carry you to a, you know, a real good run in the NCAA tournament, it's not going to happen because if he has a, an afternoon or a night like this, you need somebody to step up. So a credit to Fox to be that guy today. Well, with a victory, and we're assuming it's going to be Kentucky, although Northern Iowa comes to mind <laughs> when last year A&M came from 12 down. It's not going to happen this old oh boy. Yep. Will reach in foul. So let's uh, give this one to Kentucky to go to 16 and two in conference play. It is the fifth title under John Calipari. Top seed next week in Nashville. Always good to get an X by your name, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? Oh, it means you cinched it. Ah. <laughs> Great afternoon for De'Aaron Fox, back close to home.
northern part of the greater Houston area. Kentucky trailed by 15 in the first half. Third consecutive game, they trailed by double digits only to come back and win. Well, there's that. Uh, and I think they're just going to kind of, doesn't look like they're going to foul anymore. No. And Kentucky will just sit on it. Oh, a good reaction, too, by Kentucky. Yeah. Being down in that first half. Here's Carlton. Gives it up. And Gilder lays it in. Aggies gave it a good go. Aggies foul number 10, Tony Trocher Morelos. That is his second. eight seasons, five regular season SEC titles. See Kenny Payne there on the bench, one of the assistants. Star at Louisville. Cal's only won about 82% of his games at Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Briscoe. Unsuccessful with that one. Gilder gets two more. And on a day when Malik Monk was held to a season low of only six points, Fox comes through in the backcourt with a big second half. And Kentucky wins it 71-63. For Jim Spinarkle, Vern Lundquist saying so long from College Station. Coming up next, game two of our triple header, Notre Dame takes on Louisville. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the 2017 Men's National Championship to Greg Gumbel after this.